A few months ago, the YouTuber DeGenerosity made a video talking about the best artists to fall off. The video praised these artists for their creativity and how unfortunate their downfall was, otherwise known as falling off. But in this video, I want to highlight the very select few artists that I'm actually happy had a downfall. From overhyped artists no one cared about after their massive breakout hit, to artists who've committed disturbing crimes. By the end of this video, we'll have an answer on which one of these four was the worst artist to ever fall off. If you end up enjoying this video, consider subscribing. Stay Solid Rocky was an artist who blew up off of TikTok and was never seen of again. I'm not joking. The mama party girl, she just want have fun too. This fucking song, this annoying ass song. All the ghetto girls in my school were shaking their bones to this shit. I will admit, it's definitely catchy, but in the most annoying way possible. I knew I'm fighting out. Who even are these niggas? Why are these girls on the bed? Don't put their damn shoes on. You getting thrown the fuck out if you try that shit on my bed. He dead ass looks like the type of dude to be that one senior that all the freshman girls have a crush on. Nigga sitting in the bathroom like, yo, bro, hit this, man. Like, no, nigga, I'm trying to pit. Nigga staring at you like, you're a lame. Fuck you, bro. His music videos are generic, his style is generic, and his hair looks like a goddamn tarantula. But out of everyone in this list, due to his lack of discography, there isn't really much to judge his artistry from. So that leaves him in fourth place for the worst artist to fall off. But the nigga in the third place has more than enough of a discography to trash on. Now, of course, Wabi and Namir gotta make this list. If you know anything about this dude, this dude has had one of the saddest fall offs in a long time. And honestly, this shit might be deserved. The music is ass. Start on bulletproof up in traffic. He don't need no help in the self-destruction of his own career. And that's saying a lot coming from me. I used to be the biggest Namir fan when I was younger. I've been running, 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 gotta take me your back. He had one of the craziest runs from 2017 to 2018 with songs like Bounce Out With That. Load it up still, bouncing with that folk No hook. Bitch, I'm a savage. I ain't never ran from shit. Bitch, I be letting them have it. How y'all go? And of course, rubbing off the pain. But I'm that nigga. I won't never change. Rubbing off the pain. Then he went on to drop YBN the mixtape, putting everybody else in the YBN collective on the map, like Corday and YBN Almighty Ass. So why do I feel like Namir deserves third place? Because dude just got way too comfortable in the celebrity lifestyle. Why is that an issue? Cause he wasn't releasing shit, and when he did, it was shit. He was fucking with them niggas, girl. You know that you was getting wrong. I remember there was a time where I only saw this nigga posted with his girlfriend trying to sell some fucking Instagram scam, and it was like as soon as Corday saw the direction the group was going, he jumped ship and did his own thing. And now. Mirror feeling behind was like, all right, let me start releasing music. Wake up, get my dick sucked. And waited three fucking years to drop his debut album. Trying to be low key and stay away from the bullshit. He lost his edge, bro went back to the hood. Namir rightfully deserves third place. Because at least that nigga isn't named YK Osiris. Coming in second place, we have YK Dick Rider. I'm just gonna come out and say it. But I actually just hate this dude. To this dumbass smile, to his annoying ass voice, I just can't stand this dude. And that's coming a lot for me. I have, an, I have an annoying ass voice. And to think there was a time I thought he actually had potential. I liked his song Freaky Dancer with the baby. She's a dancer. And even his verse on gospel. I used to actually like hearing his voice until I just couldn't stand his breakout hit. Worth it. I will give you the world, baby girl. You just gotta be worth it. This shit was dead ass his only claim to fame. You couldn't go fucking anywhere without this dude mentioning the song or taking the flow from it. Like we get it. Now she she worth it. Who's saying you worth it? You're the worth this song guy, but you haven't been popping for four years. Do something new, bro. Try different jokes. After the double XL cipher, I didn't see much of him anymore until he started getting clowned by bigger artists. Like it's a genuinely sad thing for not only your pride as a man, but your entire well-being to just get bitched for a living. You struggling? You literally owe Drake the entire D to your house at this point. You owe me 60 bands, or you have to perform something right now in the crib. I swear, I need a full performance though. And that's not even the worst of it, ladies and gentlemen. YK Osiris found himself in drama somewhat recently, where a clip came out with him essentially forcing himself onto an American TV personality that goes by the name of Sukiyana. Or also Suki with a good coochie. <laughs> It's a really uncomfortable clip, so naturally people start calling this shit for what it is. She clearly didn't want to kiss, and everyone around her didn't do shit. Your music is ass, you get bitched 24-7, and you clearly got some creepy tendencies if you think that this shit is a normal thing to do. Your ass deserves this spot for the second worst artist to ever fall off. That begs the question, who's the worst artist to fall off? Depending on who you are, this name either rings very familiar in a nostalgic way, or very familiar in a terrible, horrible, and fucked up kind of way. There's a reason why this stupid fuckface is the worst artist to fall off, in my opinion. So, R. Kelly has a bunch of hits. Ignition. Don't give me that. 
Let me get it. And I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. And a bunch of other irrelevant songs. He was a major R&B artist in the 90s. Well, before most of you were probably even born. But let me list off every single reason why R. Kelly is the worst artist to fall off. Yo, tell me what this so here's the timeline. In 1991, R. Kelly started sleeping with Tiffany Hawkins, a 15-year-old girl, while he was 24. That's already enough to get a twit longer made on you and your sponsors taken away from you. The two met when Tiffany ran up to his car, recognizing the singer, and leaving with his home address for some reason? With R. Kelly encouraging Tiffany to bring friends. Like, my nigga, what? Tiffany even admitted that she thought the age gap was weird, but thought that it was a normal thing because he's a star, which is a sentiment that needs to be stopped the fuck out and burnt in the fiery pits of hell. In 19. In 1994, when R. Kelly was 27 years old, he would marry the then 15-year-old singer, Aaliyah, and knew her back when she was 12 fucking years old. It was confirmed by a former tour manager that R. Kelly bribed a government worker into obtaining a fake ID so that they could officiate the wedding. Thankfully, the marriage was nulled just a month later. In 2001, R. Kelly was sued by Tracy Sampson for allegedly inducing her into an indecent sexual relationship when she was 17. She claimed that he controlled every part of her life, which then led to another settlement with an undisclosed amount of money granted to Tracy. In 2002, Montina Woods sued R. Kelly after claiming that he secretly recorded a sex tape without her knowledge and sold it under the table. In that same year, Patrice Jones claimed that he impregnated her when she was underage and forced her to have an abortion. What the fuck? And then the Chicago Sun-Times received an anonymous video showing R. Kelly performing sexual acts on a minor, which included pissing on her. And then he was even found guilty on the case due to the jury not finding evidence that the victim was a minor. And in 2017, another allegation came out about R. Kelly trapping six women in a supposed sex cult where he'd seduce women and manipulate them by telling him he'd help them with their music career but then take control of their lives dictating what they eat how they dress when they bathe when they sleep and took their cell phones and made them cut contact with the ones they love thankfully in 2019 the documentary surviving r kelly would drop which was a six episode program featuring interviews and accounts of r kelly's sexual endeavors with countless victims which led to r kelly finally being dropped and a lawyer went on to obtain a video of r kelly sleeping with a 14 year old girl and they, and they finally packed this thing up! Now, if you don't mind me... Nigga looks like a discontinued Boondocks character. I walked up to this nigga in the store one time and screamed, the nigga chin! And he was so shocked his receding hairline started running away and the shit turned into Tory Lane. Who let this nigga walk into the courtroom looking like this? Somebody ought to handle this dude like they did Lee Harvey Oswald. Washed up 90s singer housewives of Atlanta head ass. Bro, for real, think he him in this photo shoot head ass. Minor loving, I believe I can fly, creepy pedophile, Andrew Tate looking ass. R. Kelly, I may just piss on her. And then he had the audacity to make this shit. I admit I fuck with all the ladies, both older and young ladies. But tell me how they call it pedophile because of that shit that's crazy. Nigga rot in jail. And that's why R. Kelly is the worst artist to ever fall off.